Look at her. Isn't she so pretty? Oh, this is my new MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Max chip, 32 gig GPU, one terabyte SSD storage laptop. And it is replacing my 2015 MacBook Pro, which has been my prize, my most prized piece of tech since I got it, this computer has been a beast. It has served me so well. Today I'm going to showcase myself unboxing it, setting it up, giving my first impressions because you guys tend to like when I do that. You may have recently seen my iMac setup because I recently upgraded my iMac as well. Let me just say that this is not a typical thing for me by any means. I'm really playing catch up because I haven't been proactive with keeping up with my tech in a while. Like my, my MacBook Pro, as I mentioned, that I'm replacing is from 2015, but my iMac was from 2011. So this has just been a year of trying to get back to current times with devices that I use all the time for work because I am a content creator and I edit videos all the time, I'm editing photos. I just wanted to really emphasize that these are these are devices that I'm upgrading mostly because of work and improving efficiencies. They're not frivolous purchases just to make an impressive YouTube video. They would have been bought without the YouTube video, but I'm just taking you along with me because I know a lot of people get curious and interested in seeing unboxes of new tech. I watch a ton of these types of videos, so I figured I'd sprinkle mine into the mix. And on that note, let's get to the unboxing because I need to touch this baby right here. Oh my god. in time a bit. I've been using this laptop for a couple weeks now and I want to go through the process of customizing it because I haven't really done any of that. I've really only downloaded my most used apps. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk about my first impressions now that I've actually had a chance to use it. First thing I'm going to tackle is changing my desktop wallpaper. I had originally just changed it to this Apple built-in one that I do like, but I want something a little bit more personal. I like the idea though of going for more of something scenic around the world because I use this device a lot for work and I feel like it's a way to transport me away from work mode. I ended up finding this beautiful photo from Portugal on this site called Beyond Ordinary Guides. I think I found it through looking up Portugal scenery on Pinterest. Look at that. I think it's colorful and vibrant. It's me in a good headspace. I have a Portuguese background, so whenever I get to kind of sprinkle Portugal into my life, I always try and take advantage of that. Something I haven't really used in the past, but I want to try making an effort with this computer is using sticky notes. With the stickies application that's built into the computer, you can just add in you know, a, a reminder to, you know, for example, send email to, who do I need to get back to today? Emma by 3 p.m. Eastern. I can change the font into something more bold. And something I just discovered is that you can actually add a sketch to your sticky notes on your laptop using your phone. We're talking about an email here. I'll do a little envelope. Definitely an extra not necessary step as far as the sketch goes, but the reminder itself uh, I think would be something really great to get in the habit of using because at the beginning of each day I can maybe create some sticky notes related to some tasks I need to do. And once they get eliminated from my desktop, I know we are done so. I'm gonna take off the sketch for now though, just to clean it up a bit. Create outline for January videos. I also wanna do some customization to the widgets on the right here. I wanna take away the world clock. Do I want screen time on here? Do I wanna be confronted with that? I don't know. 
I'll keep the stocks and the news story. I think a calendar is always really helpful. I'm also gonna put the weather widget there beside the calendar for obvious reasons. It's always a really helpful piece of information to have access to. Now I'm gonna go into system preferences and do some tweaking again to the accent color of the laptop. So I have it at purple right now, but maybe yellow? Orange? I think orange will end up pairing with my desktop background really nicely. So we'll go with orange. I'm gonna keep it on light mode because I'm one of those rare people who do enjoy light mode. I'm also gonna minimize my dock a little bit. In the sound effects section, I'm gonna switch from boop to funky. What a switch. Display wise, I'm also going to add Final Cut Pro to my dock, my permanent dock. I'm gonna take out numbers. When I open Safari, it's kind of bleh right now. So if I go to the bottom right, I can actually make some adjustments and add in a background image. There's some preset ones in the computer, but I'm not really a fan of any of them to be H. I just looked up aesthetic desktop wallpaper on Pinterest, and I'm really just gonna grab the first thing that kind of catches my eye. I found this oranges pattern, so I'm gonna save it and try this. Oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that. I also don't know why some of these are listed as favorites. I'm gonna delete a ton of them. Very happy with that, so we're gonna move forward. I actually had the idea too of because I have kind of a Portugal vibe going here and I'm always looking for ways to kind of practice my Portuguese because it is pitiful. What if I were to change the language of my computer? I'm gonna see how setting it to Portuguese works for me. Worst case scenario, I'll set it back to English, but I have heard that this is a great way to get familiar with some more terms in a different language. I also like to make sure that the time on my devices is displayed with seconds in to play because sometimes when I'm uploading, I like to get it to the exact second if I'm doing it in real time. Similar to what I did with the iMac, I also want to add in some pre-organized folders so that as I download things onto my laptop, I can sort them right away. I'm gonna add a new folder for wallpapers. I also wanna create a folder for 2021 and put all of these in here and another folder for 2022. I'm a huge believer in backing up your devices. So anything that's stored on this laptop, I wanna make sure I regularly am taking time to ensure there's copies of this material on a hard drive. So I'm going to create a folder called not backed up so that when it is time to back up my hard drive i just have to take this entire one folder copy paste it into my hard drive and just wait it out as it transfers and then once i finish with that that folder can then be relabeled to backed up and the date that i backed up the the folder and maybe even the device that i backed it up onto i said backed up a lot in the span of a few seconds. <laughs> I do want to add the GoodNotes app because I use GoodNotes on my iPad and I want to get better at integrating these two together. You can find out more about what's on my iPad and digital note taking down in the description box below. I've already downloaded Adobe Lightroom, Microsoft Word, Cricut Design Space, Milanote, but I do want to make a point of experimenting with more desktop apps. So if you are interested in seeing a video in the new year of which apps I love the most, that I try, let me know in the comments. But that is pretty much all I need to do on the visual front. I think customization though can happen beyond just what's inside a laptop. It also can be the accessories that you use with it. One of my favorite things I've been using is this laptop tilt. This was sent to me by Grovemade a year plus ago and I have used it ever since I got it. It just helps give the laptop a little bit of height for when you're working at a desk so it's a little bit more ergonomical you're not like looking down as much i love this little shelf at the back because i actually slip in some of my adapters or hard drives when they're plugged into my computer so if i have to move around my apartment everything is actually very easy to move because it's all tucked away in here look at that so cozy although this laptop has meant the return of the sd card slot the hdmi slot magsafe a headphone jack it still doesn't have a traditional usb slot but for any of those needs i'm going to be using my anchor usb-c hub I got this off of amazon i'll have it linked in the description box below i find a hub like this just a lot more convenient than just getting a lot of individual adapters since i'm a content creator i'm constantly editing videos on my laptop and instead of editing directly on the laptop i edit off of a hard drive actually an ssd drive this is the samsung t5 portable ssd and i love this ssd drive it doesn't take up much space at all so it's very 
travel friendly and not sensitive to to like movement i find with hard drives you sometimes are a little bit more careful of not bumping them when you're exporting projects and stuff but i never have any issues with this i will also have this linked down below this is a 500 gigabyte version but i would definitely be interested in getting a terabyte version because these fill up fairly quickly when you're editing projects i was mostly excited for the productivity upgrade that this laptop would bring me because i had previously with my 2015 macbook pro just been in a place where that rainbow of death was coming up a lot things were really slow but what i wasn't anticipating or really looking forward to was the sound upgrade and i want to mention it because the first few times i heard audio on this laptop i was kind of taken aback by how impressive these speakers were. I am no sound expert by any means. So, you know, I don't know from a technical standpoint how amazing they are, but from someone who just has ears and likes hearing things, I was so surprised by what a fuller, deeper, better sound I got from this laptop than I had been getting with my previous version. I'm sure from laptop to laptop each year, you don't notice the difference, but six years makes a difference. Who knew, who knew? My one concern with deciding to get the M1 Max chip in the 14 inch laptop was the fact that maybe possibly my fans would kick on because there's not as much room in the laptop to regulate temperature for a more powerful chip. But since having this laptop, I have not heard the fan go off once, which is insane because I used to hear my fan go off on a daily basis multiple times a day. It is mesmerizing how quiet this thing is. I'll have Final Cut Pro going, Lightroom, multiple tabs on Safari, music playing on Spotify, all the things and nothing, nothing. When these laptops first were announced, I watched a lot of reaction videos and even a lot of initial reviews once people got their hands on them. And so much of the conversation was about the notch on the screen. And I was kind of shocked by the reaction to the notch because as someone who has used a phone with a notch for years and initially had a very, oh my goodness, this is going to be invasive reaction, it has become just a regular part of my phone. Like I don't think about it anymore. So I fully expected that to be the case with the laptop. And at least for me, I never think about the notch. It really disappears a lot of the time with software, depending on what apps you have open. Like for example, if I open Final Cut Pro and put it into full screen, you don't, you don't see anything. But even when it's not and it's there, I just, I don't find it a big deal. So if it's something that you're worried about, at least from my point of view, I don't think it's something you should be worried about. Coming from a MagSafe charger computer, I am really happy that I didn't have to adjust to the non-MagSafe life because I do love using the MagSafe charger with this. It's a really fast charge. Overall though, I've been really happy with my purchase. I haven't been encountering rainbows of death. I've just been able to speed through um, not just the actual editing process of videos, but also the exports. They've been so fast. There's a lot of speed test YouTubers that have videos with technical details on all that. That's not my expertise, but I just know from a usage standpoint, it's been very efficient. I was a little concerned that once I got my laptop that I would have thought, oh, I should have upgraded to the 16 inch, but I stuck to the 14 inch because A, it was a screen increase in comparison to my previous laptop because I was coming from a 13 inch, but I also really love the portability of this. And I feel like if I want the large screen, I have other devices to do that with. Also very glad that I got the M1 Max chip with the 32 gigs of RAM because I think it just future proofs this laptop a bit more than if I would have gone with the 16, 16 gigabyte RAM. That was the big one. I really wanted the 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I felt like once you've got to 32 gigabytes, you might as well go to the M1 Max chip rather than staying with the Pro chip. But I probably, would have been more than okay with the pro chip as well because i do well on my m1 imac for editing so the m1 pro chip definitely would have been in itself a boost for me but i splurged a little bit got the m1 max and based on the fact that i haven't had any problems with any lags in my workflow so far not regretting that i'll wrap this video up by saying that yes i love my macbook pro 14 inch with my m1 max chip but I definitely don't think it's 
a necessary purchase for everyone. If you don't have the workflow that requires more power like this, then I don't feel like you need to spend the money there. The M1 chips in the, I think the MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, I think are more than enough for so many users out there, which is great because those are lower price point devices. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm excited to keep experimenting, keep working with this baby right here. I wanna know in the comment section down below, what is the first thing you customize when you open a new device. Is it going to dark mode? Is it a certain app that you must download? Do you love switching up the wallpaper? I'd also love to know in the comments if there are other types of tech focused videos you'd like to see from me from like an organization's productivity standpoint possibly. I will see you all very soon with a new video and until then, bye everyone.